Now let us work on the mechanism of compound interest. Well, like in the simple interest, we shall have the similar kind of terminology with respect to compound interest as well. There, are, one is time period and we shall have principal and rate of interest per annum and interest amount total interest total interest percentage now just like in the simple interest here also we shall consider a scenario of three years which is a business transaction between you and i now so as i told you we'll be talking about three years so time is one two and three years now let us assume again i will borrow 100 rupees from you so you have given me rupees 100 now you say rate of interest per annum is a 10 percent now first year if i want to continue 10 percent of 100 rupees i have to pay as interest so that is 10 rupees well amount 100 rupees i have taken from you so 10 rupees interest altogether i have to pay you 110 rupees at the end of first year now if you observe this carefully this is absolutely same as our simple interest so that is simple interest and compound interest whatever it is the first year it will always be same well things gets changed when you start handling compound interest from the second year now if i want to continue for second year unlike in the simple interest you won't apply the rate of interest in 100 rather this time you'll apply the rate of interest on 110 rupees which is amount at the end of first year it means in compound interest rate of interest is always applied on principal along with the previous year's interest so 110 rupees is the new principal on this at 10 percent 10% of 110 is 11 rupees. So first year I already owe you 110. This year 11 rupees interest. So altogether I have to pay you 121 rupees at the end of second year. Let us say if I want to continue for third year as well. What will you do here is you will apply interest on 121 rupees in the third year. So this includes original principal and the previous year's interest. So again 10 percent on this which is a 12.1 rupee now amount i already owe you 121 at the end of second year now third year 12.1 rupees interest so altogether 133.1 rupee interest now first year our interest was rupees 10 so for one year also total interest will be rupees 10 now in the second year interest is 11 rupees but for two years you're paying interest of rupees 21 again third year 12.1 is the interest but for three years i'm paying 33.1 rupees as interest well this is 10 percent of original principal 100 so our total interest percent is a 10 percent of principal now 21 will be 21 percent of the original principal 100 so tip is a 21 percent of principal here 33.1 percent of principal now in simple interest we directly got it as 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent and so on but whereas in compound interest we are getting a different tip that is 10 percent 21 percent and 33.1 percent why because here we apply interest on interest of the previous year that is the reason we'll be getting that extra percentage in the tip well in simple interest we used to calculate tip with just a simple formula r into t rate of interest into time or another way is interest divided by principal into 100 but how do we calculate tip directly here so let me show you what exactly is happening inside this now if you see we started with rupees 100 on this you applied 10 percent interest so 10 percent of 100 is rupees 10 so that becomes 110 at the end of first year now in the second year you apply the interest on same 110 rupees on 110 10 percent so 10 percent of 110 is 11 rupees so 110 plus 11 
121 this is the amount at the end of second year now again in the third year again you applied a 10 percent interest but on 121 rupees so 10 percent of 121 is 12.1 so 121 plus 12.1 is 133.1 now that is the amount at the end of third year now can you recall anything about this haven't we already studied this yes successive percentage your compound interest is absolutely same as successive percentage now if you see first year 10 rupees you are paying interest that is 10 percent of principal now second year 100 to 121 you are paying 21 rupees interest that is 21 percent of principal for three years 100 to 133.1 that is 33.1 rupees extra which is nothing but 33.1 percent of principal so it means in compound interest our tip can be calculated using the successive percentage formula now what was that recall our formula was x plus y plus xy by 100 let us apply this formula and check out whether we can calculate the TIP or not. Now let me say 10% uh, is the rate of interest like here for 3 years. So first what we do, we apply x plus y plus xy by 100 for first 2 years. So for these 2 if I apply I should get 10 plus 10 because x value is 10, y value is 10. Now xy 10 into 10, 100, 100 by 100, 1. What do I get? 21%. This is for 2 years. If you check here as well we have TIP as 21% for 2 years under compound interest. Now if you want the third one as well, I will bring this 10% here. Now for these 2, I will apply the successive percentage. What happens? X value is 21, Y value is 10. 21 plus 10, X plus Y plus XY. 21 into 10 is 210 divided by 100 is 2.1. So, 21 plus 10, 31 plus 2.1, that is 33.1 percent of principal is our TIP for 3 years. So, this is how we calculate TIP in compound interest. Now, let us work a little more on calculating the compound interest for 2 years or our TIP, that is total interest percentage. So, I will give you a rate of interest per annum. And here we have to calculate a compound interest for 2 years or our TIP. So let us see how fast we can calculate the total interest percentage and how it is going to help us when we are dealing with the problems. Suppose if I say a rate of interest is 5% per annum. Now I can tell my TIP is 10.25% of principal. How? Because we use the same formula that is x plus y plus xy by 100. Here x value is also 5%, y value is also 5% because first year 5% and second year 5%. If I apply 5 plus 5 plus 5 into 5, 25. 25 by 100 is 0 0.25 which should give us 10.25%. I hope you are understanding this. Now if you want to write amount as well here. amount for two years what it will be we know that if our compound interest is 10.25 percent then amount will be 10.25 percent more than the principal so i can write it as 110.25 percent of principal likewise if i take six percent if you applied in the formula six plus six twelve plus 6 into 6 36 36 by 100 0 0.36 all together 12.36 percent of principal which when it comes to the amount it has to be 112.36 percent of principal suppose if i take 7 percent let me write it for you one more time here x plus y 7 plus 7 plus x into y 7 into 7 49 49 by 100 0 0.49 which should give us 14.49 percent so our compound interest for two years will be 14.49 percent of principal amount will be 
14.49% of a principal. Likewise, if I take a 8%, this will be 16.64% of principal. Suppose if it is 9%, we should get 18.81% of principal. How? 9 plus 9? 18, 9 into 9, 81, 81 by 100, 0 0.81, altogether 18.81, suppose if it is 10 percent, this we have already calculated, that is 21 percent of the principal, but if it is 11 percent, 11 percent means it is not 22 point, careful, this is a 23 point to 1 percent of a principal, now why, now, if you take 11, 11 plus 11 plus 11 square is 121 divided by 100 will be 1.21. So what do we get? 11 plus 11 is 22 plus 1.21 should make it 23.21%. So suppose if I take 12%, what should we get? We should get 12 plus 12, 14. 14 plus 12 square 144 that is 15.44% of principal. Again if I take 13%, what is 13%? 26, 27.69% of the principal and so on. Suppose if I take 4%, 4 plus 4, 8. 4 into 4, 16, 16 by 100 is 0 0.16. That should give us 8.16% of principal. Likewise, if I take 3%, it has to be 6. 0.9% of principal and if I take 2% it will be 4.04% of principal. So like this we, we must be able to calculate compound interest for 2 years or our TIP within 2 seconds. Now when can you do that? Only when you are good with x plus y plus xy by 100. This should completely sit on your brains so that you can calculate that mentally so that and you'll immediately get the number what you require under compound interest for two years. Now we shall see couple of examples on compound interest and let us check whatever what whatever we have learned till now can be applied on the problems or not. Suppose if I give you problem something like this. Let's say you have a principal of rupees 8000 and your rate of interest is 5% per annum. Then I might ask you to calculate what is compound interest for 2 years. Now first thing, calculate the TIP, 5% per annum for 2 years. So our TIP compound interest for 2 years should be equal to 10.25% of principal. So we just need to calculate what is 10.25% of 8000. So I can calculate this as 10% plus 0.25%. Now what is 10% of 8000? We all know that that is 800. Now how do you calculate 0.25%? Isn't it just nothing but 1% divided by 4 should give us a 0.25%? Yes. What is 1%? 80. If I divide it for, with 4, that should become 20. 80 by 4 is 20. So, altogether, our compound interest for 2 years is rupees 820. As simple as that. You need not to use any complicated formula. If you just know that compound interest is absolutely same as your successive percentage. Suppose if I give a question something like this. A sum of rupees 12,000 is compounded quarterly at a 12% per annum. So what is the compound interest for 6 months? Well, if you see there is a new word this time that is compounded quarterly. Now we haven't heard this word before till now in our concepts, right? So this actually belongs to concept called a term compounding. Now first, let me explain you what exactly this term compounding is and then we'll go back to the problem right now term compounding it means you can compound any sum in different ways that is either you can do it annually or biannually or triannually or quarterly or even monthly so what is happening here Whenever you compound annually, it means you're going to compound that sum only one time in a year. Now, when it comes to biannually, 
it is two times in a year. Triannually means three times in a year. Quarterly means four times in a year. And monthly means five times in a year. Now, since you are compounding annually only once in a year, that is after 12 months. Now, when it comes to biannually, two times in a year. Now, what does that mean? Two times in a year means you are going to compound that sum once in every six months. So, once in six months and again after next six months. Now, when it comes to triannually, three times in a year. So, divide that year of 12 months by 3. So, that should that should give you 4 months. So, it means you are going to compound it after every 4 months for 3 times. Likewise, quarterly 4 times. 12 months divided by 4 should give us 3 months. So, first 3 months, second, third and fourth. Likewise, monthly means totally, I am so sorry, this is not 12 times, uh, 5 times, that is a 12 times in a year. So, one month, one month, one month, likewise. How many times? Twelve times. Right? So, this is nothing but a term compounding. Now, let us apply the same concept in this problem as well. So, in this problem, we want to calculate the compound interest for six months. Right? So, compounding quarterly means once in every three months. So, three months, three months, three months and three months, four times. But we want compound interest only for six months. It means only two times. So, three months and three months should give us six months. Now, again, careful. 12%, this is per annum. Right? It is nothing but 12% for one year. Now, we are going to divide it into four times. So, that should give us 3%, 3%, 3% and 3%. So, all together 12% per annum. But what do we need? We need only for 6 months. So, for this we will apply our compound interest concept now. So, 3%, 3%, 2 times if you apply x plus y plus xy by 100, we should get 6.09% of principal. This is our compound interest. So, if I do this 6.09% of, what do we have here? 12,000. So, I can cancel this percentage with two zeros. So, if I do the cancellation part, I'll get uh, 12 into 2, 72, 100 plus the 0 and 72, 1, 7, 3, 0, 8. And I have one 0 extra here. After a decimal point, I have two digits. So, 73080 is our final answer. That is compound interest for six months. Well, this is complete basics and mechanism about both the simple interest and compound interest. Well, we haven't solved many problems because this video is all about explaining how exactly these two types of the interests work. Now, actual problems or high level problems we will be seeing in the further advanced concepts. To watch more free videos, download or log application from Play Stores. If you are benefited by these videos, Please like and share our videos and also do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of our new videos that we upload regularly. If you have any queries or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section below. Also, if you want to reach out to me or any of my team members, you can always do that through any of the social media platforms and the links of which are already provided in the description below.